Uh, tonight we're continuing our study on a couple of verses from Romans chapter 14. Uh, last week we looked at all of Romans 14 leading up to verse 17, which is uh, kind of the theme verse for this study as we talk about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Uh, to catch that backstory, you can go back and watch the first part of this series. Uh, but moving forward tonight, we're going to spend the next uh, three weeks looking at each one of those words, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And uh, we'll, take, we'll take them one at a time. And so uh, let's look at the verse as a reminder for us. And the verse following it, I think, really completes the thought uh, that will really lead us into where we're supposed to be tonight. Romans chapter 14, starting in verse 17, says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you serve Christ with this attitude, you'll please God and others will approve of you too. Like we talked about last week, the real issue for Paul is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. After he spends time discussing uh, with the readers what's important not to dwell on, uh, he hits us with these three things and says, these are the important things. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. And he goes on to say that if you have these three things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, then you will please God and others. Now think about that just for a minute. That's this high and lofty promise from Scripture that if we have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, then we will please God and others. How many times have you said, man, I just want to please the Lord, Right? Or, or I just want to do right by everybody else. I, I just want to do right by people. Well, as we look at these three things, recognize that the scripture tells us if we live like this, if we live our lives in Christ like this, then we are pleasing the Lord and others. So tonight I want to take a, a, that first word righteousness and look at it. Now, right here in the New Living Translation, it calls it goodness, but it's oftentimes and most often translated as righteousness in scripture and I think that more aptly describes what Paul's saying to us about our lives. So what is righteousness? It's easy for us to see righteousness as holiness and kind of interchange those thoughts but I think we shortchange what the author intends for us to grasp here if we only talk about holiness. Just for clarity's sake holiness is when we're set apart for the Lord. It has to do with our lives being set apart for sacred work for the kingdom of God righteousness comes from a place of holiness. So when we are holy, then we can operate in righteousness. So for lack of a better phrase, righteousness is the sequel to holiness. And in this particular passage, the word righteousness comes from a Greek word that is translated as righteousness 92 times in the Bible. And the definition of that word is in direct relation to people that we are being made right with God. That's what that word means right there. We're being made right with God. How are we made right with God? Through salvation. Jesus says in John 16, righteousness is available because I go to the Father. Jesus is the one who makes us right with God. So then what about God's righteousness? The scripture tells us throughout that God is righteous or that he's filled with righteousness well, that can't mean made right with God. God can't make himself right by himself. Like that gets really confusing just to even try and think about it, right? So here's the difference. Our righteousness is when we're made right with God. God's righteousness is when something is made right by God. Our righteousness is when we are made right with God. God's righteousness is when something or someone is made right by God. This again points us back to salvation. God made us right by sending Jesus to die on the cross and take punishment for our sins. And another word for someone making something right is justice. So while the New Testament word for righteousness is almost entirely translated as righteousness in Scripture, the Old Testament word for righteousness is primarily translated as righteousness, but 20% of the time it's translated as just or justice. Now, you may not be able to wrap your head around righteousness. It might seem like this abstract thought to you, but I think we all understand on some level justice. So let's hold on to that for the rest of our study tonight to better understand how we're to live in righteousness. I want to look at a few verses in Psalms 85. 
Psalms 85 is this psalm of praise for the Lord's salvation. So we have this, this, this continuing thought of righteousness and salvation going hand in hand. Throughout the psalm, the author explains what God has done for us when he saved us. And then at the bottom, in true psalm form, he kind of gives our response or what it should be for God's salvation. So we're going to pick up in verse 7 in Psalm 85. It says this, Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. There it is, that salvation. Verse 8, I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. So God brings peace to his people through salvation, but our peace comes with a warning or a challenge. Let us not return to our foolish ways. Perhaps if there is unrest in your life, it could be traced back to you or someone in your life returning to their foolish pre-salvation ways. Verse 9, he says, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, so our land will be filled with his glory. There's hope again. Even if our foolishness drags us away, salvation is always near. If you've, if you've been in that state of your life where you're just like, you know what, I've been living in those foolish ways, the scripture says today is the day of salvation. And right here it reiterates that and says salvation is always near. Right now, in this moment, salvation is near to you. Maybe you just need to pause this video and just take a moment and talk to the Lord and say, God, I received that salvation. You might be thinking, I don't even know how to do that. That's real simple. I use ABC because it's easy to remember. A means that we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. B means we believe that Christ died on the cross for our sins. And C means that we confess our sins to the Lord. And when we do those ABCs, what happens is God comes in and he forgives us of our sins and then we repent, which means 180 degrees, we turn away. Maybe you just need to take a moment right now and just go, God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of grace. I receive that tonight. Help me, Lord, to repent of my sins and be a brand new person. It's that simple. It's that simple and you're brand new. Man, that fires me up. I believe someone, someone that will watch this video will ask Jesus to come into your heart and receive salvation again. It's near. God brought you to this video so you could see it. Man, that's so cool. Verse 10 says this, Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. So here's where we get to the heart of it. Salva salvation brings unfailing love and truth together. There's this marriage that takes place in salvation. Uh, God's unfailing love where he, he says, my steadfast love, that love that is unconditional comes together with the truth of not only who we are, but who God wants us to, who he has created us to be, what he's done in our life. And when those two things collide, salvation happens. And then righteousness. Remember, think justice. Righteousness and peace, kiss. It is an intimate, affectionate collision. When's the last time that you've seen justice and peace come together intimately and affectionately? Usually it is violent. Usually it is cried out for in protest like we've seen in the last few weeks. No justice, no peace. We want them hand in hand, but usually they come, they come not together, but they come in opposition of one another, like ships in the night passing by one another. And yet the scripture reminds us they are intended not just to come together best friends, but they are to come together intimately and affectionately, justice and peace. I can tell you the most prevalent time that it happened in your life when you receive salvation. When you accepted Christ as your Savior, the justice of your sin that had to be dealt with was met with the peace of God's 
takeover of the throne of your heart and it was intimate and it was affectionate. There was not hostility there. There was, there was, not, uh, there was not confrontation there. Instead, there was a joining together that was intimate and affectionate when you allowed God's peace to step in to your justice moment for your sin. And he said, I'll take the punishment. I'll take the blame. And I'll give you a brand new life in its place. That's righteousness. Us being made right with God. And here I was sitting thinking maybe I did something to deserve it. We didn't do anything to deserve what God did for us. That righteousness that he offers us, man, it's all about what he did. That justice that is served was served for us, but it was not served to us. It was served to our Lord and Savior Jesus when he died on the cross for our sins. Verse 11 says, Truth springs up from the earth and righteousness smiles down from heaven. Hmm. Truth comes from the earth, springs up like, like a harvest, right? And righteousness, justice smiles down from heaven. It's interesting how our current cultural climate has tried to separate truth and justice as if we can or should have one without the other. This verse explains to us that when truth is harvested in someone down here on earth, justice smiles down from heaven. When we come to the grips of who we are, when we come to the understanding of the truth of our human condition, God's justice smiles down on us. How can his justice smile down on us? When the wages of sin is death, how can God's justice smile down on us? You know how that happens? Because Jesus took the punishment of death. And so God's righteousness helps us to be made right by the Lord through the work of Jesus Christ. Verse 12 goes on and says, Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings. Our land will yield a bountiful harvest. This next verse reiterates the thought and then some. Righteousness comes from spiritual harvest in our lives, but, don't miss this, it also produces a bountiful harvest harvest around us in the lives of the people around us. Righteousness, verse 13 says, righteousness goes as a herald before him, the Lord. Righteousness goes as a herald before him, preparing the way for his steps. So lastly tonight, God's justice goes ahead of him, shouting and proclaiming that we can be made right with God, by God, and this prepares the way for his journey. God's justice goes ahead of him, shouting and proclaiming that we can be made right with God and by God, and this prepares the way for his journey. So let's bring it around full circle tonight because really probably you're thinking, I mean, that's a cool story, bro, but what does that have to do with me and righteousness? God's kingdom is best represented in our lives through righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We achieve God's righteousness when we allow ourselves to be made right with Him. But we express God's righteousness when we work to be made right with others. We receive God's righteousness when we allow ourselves to be made right with Him through salvation but we express God's righteousness when we work to be made right with others, treating people right, seeing people as the image of God and treating them with the dignity they deserve as humans, but also as part of God's righteous plan. Righteousness is expressed in us when we work to see others the same way that God sees us, not as someone who needs justice exacted upon them, but as someone who needs us to wrap them up and say, 
I have freely received that justice from the Lord and I freely offer it to you. I freely offer it to you. Well, what's the biblical word for that? I'd call it grace. When we extend God's grace to the people around us and say, hey, I love you with the love of the Lord because I've learned that love from God loving me. That's when we are acting righteous. And that's why righteousness always leads to harvest. Because when we live in God's righteousness, we recognize that we have been right with God, we've been made right with God, and that others around us have that same opportunity. And God placed us there to give them that opportunity. So then it makes sense why God's kingdom is best represented by righteousness. Because God's kingdom is created by righteousness. My prayer for you tonight is that you would learn to accept the righteousness that the Lord has given you. That it would begin to creep into every part of your life and you would say, Lord, I'm not perfect, I'm not whole, I'm not anything without you. But God, when you step in, I am made right with you. And once you do that, then you'll be able to see others differently and not just accept them for who they are, but to offer them the life-changing righteousness of God. Man, it's an honor to be with you tonight. I love you so much. Can't wait to see your faces again. Thank you.